Hello, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Robison. I go by Liz. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to how you may be able to use Nursing Central uh, from Unbound Medicine as part of an interactive assignment uh, for your theory class or uh, either in a clinical class as well. So for your classroom instruction. I'm taking an example of uh, a free product that's available through the National League of Nursing and I've adapted it for a lesson uh, re regarding a case related to a neuro client who experienced a mild concussion uh, status post motor vehicle accident uh, the day prior. So this is probably applicable to second year students when they get into trauma content uh, specifically maybe looking at neuro types of conditions and assessments related to that. So let me first show you how you can get to these resources that are free. So I'm going to go to the NLN, National League for Nursing. These uh, uh, cases are free for you to use. You don't have to be logged in. You don't have to be a member of the National League of Nursing. If you go to Education Assessment tab at the top, you'll see a section related to Advancing Care Excellence related to ACE. Within that uh, area here, you'll see there's a variety of different cases here. There's lots of resources uh, within these cases uh, for you to pick, pick and choose from for a variety of classes. Again, it's Advancing Care Excellence, uh, and uh, they provide great vignettes to be able to integrate within your uh, assignments to kind of bring some uh, activities related to real cases within your discussion of your class content. So I'm going to go to the veterans uh, case here, and I'm going to specifically go to Unfolding Cases. When I select this area here on unfolding cases, I'm going to pick Randy Adams. I've looked at this case and I want to use that for my neuro. So it gives you a little bit of history and the way these are set up is similar for all the cases. It talks about the different scenarios. Then you can see here there's a tab that allows you to download all the files for this unfolding case. I have a lot of experience in simulation and so uh, these can be used where you uh, do some prep assignments, even for simulation, and then actually run a case uh, with a particular mannequin, or you can also use standardized patients. However you want to do your simulations, you can run a simulation using these resources as well. And you can use the prep assignment that I've created for class as a prep assignment for uh, the simulation as well. So I look at simulation chart one. I'm gonna look at this particular material. And so I bring that up and I'm gonna bring that uh, so you can see what downloaded on my side here on my screen. You can see here it's very short. It gives you a lot of detail. And especially for simulation, you can really add this to re uh, creating a record and using this. I've adjusted this, though, for my classroom assignment. So I'm going to show you how I did that adjustment here. And so I'm only going to use the SBAR report and the provider orders as uh, a short activity uh, that's going to be part of the neuro class where I'm going to uh, specifically go over neuro content. And I'm going to use this particular case, uh, unfolding case, as an interactive, very short activity. But you can see here uh, within this uh, case, I've uh, asked on the second page for uh, some preparation um, assignment uh, that it relates to this case. So I specifically asked students to do some preparatory work based on this case before the class. And most of the information in here is uh, adjusted to uh, hyperlink to Nursing Central. So I'm using Nursing Central as my resource to provide some very interactive 
activity for the students to use Nursing Central to get into their resources and know what this resource really uh, provides for them. Now, this is second year students, and they may uh, they may or may not have remembered how to do some of these activities. So within the preparation assignments, I've created a hyperlink that actually goes to the videos created by Unbound on how to create a grasp deck, how to create a note, how to favorite. So those videos are available. They are also available under the Unbound resource as well. So uh, you can go to Learning Center for Nursing. And you can look at uh, the videos here, Nursing Central training videos here. Under uh, the training videos under exclusive tools, this is where you'll find those videos. All of them are made in the platform of YouTube. So the hyperlinks that I've created within that document hyperlink to the YouTube version uh, that um, is provided uh, as a way you can link that when you're on Nursing Central. So let me show you what I've essentially done here. I wanted the students here, I'm going to go back to here, to create a grasp deck. And so they can review that video, but I specifically tell them what I want them to do with that grasp deck. They're going to use the words head concussion, and they're going to type in the description area, neuro class, um, and then they're going to select auto-generate. And I'm going to ask them to pick only five items from the auto-generated uh, cards, essentially, to allow them to then uh, see which of those uh, items that have been auto-generated may apply to this case and assist with some knowledge uh, related to that case. I'm not going to have them uh, publish it. They're just going to save and finish it. Uh, and I'd let them know that that pen symbol will allow them to see the description to assist with that selection. So let me go over what I mean by that. When I go to my home in the grasp deck here, I'm going to create a deck here. And remember, I asked them to put in the term head concussion and then just type in the description area, area neuro uh, class. If, if there is something to select here and they want to sel select it here, they can just leave it at the default for course, um, or they can just put other course uh, if they want to. It's up to them. They really don't need to fill in this particular area for this assignment. And then I'm going to ask them to auto-generate. You can see a lot of cards are auto-generated here, and I've essentially asked them to look at this um, pen here which is the edit function and allow them to be able to select a card uh, if they want to create a, uh, one of the five cards. So if I select this one, uh, I'm going to uh, make, uh, I'm going to do another, which is, uh, which is part of that card here. I'm going to go back. So only one card has been selected. I'm going to go back, hit the back button on your browser is the easiest way. And you can let them know that as well. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to uh, pick a couple of other ones that I have already looked at. And I kind of know that these are ones that I want to pick. The assessment area here. Um, I'm going to look at uh, planning and implementation for that uh, cerebral concussion. Um, and I'm going to, so that's three. I'm going to essentially look at documentation as well. So now uh, I'm going to, I have five cards and I'm going to save and finish. And so now that activity is done. Then here, I'm going to ask them to create a note. Within this planning document, I've actually created hyperlinks. And so I've asked them to, uh, and I'm going to put this so I can see it. I've asked them to create a note for CT scan. And then the, um, the medication lorazepam, and I specifically asked what I want that note to include. And so uh, I've hyperlinked CT scan and hit the open hyperlink, and it'll go to Nursing Central since I have already have that open. And you can see I've already created that note. They need to do the same thing. All they do is scroll over it here. 
and it pops open a note. And then I, for the notes that I did under my notes here, I put the ACE uh, V series Randy Adams CT information. That's just how I labeled my notes so I could find that. And you need to do that as an instructor because during your classroom time, this is where you're going to bring up this activity and you're going to engage the students with that activity and information. So I would I would look at this here and I'm, uh, I want the students to understand that caution symbol for a CT, what that might mean and what might a patient need to be told in terms of preparation, what might need to be um, uh, potentially provided for a patient going through a CT to uh, minimize the risk. So that would be a great uh, discussion in class. All right. The next thing I ask them to create that note for is lorazepam. I want them to highlight the area for adverse reactions and side effects, that neuro area. I want them to uh, also highlight that area for dosage uh, for IV uh, because you can see that what was ordered was an IV dosage. Uh, and then uh, also want them under IV administration, IV push the dilutin rate. So there's several areas that they need to create a note for as well. So uh, again, I've uh, hyperlinked lorazepam. So I'm going to open that. And uh, there's a, the, you can either have, um, obviously they're going to have this as a reference for their assignment here. Uh, so I've had mine already set here in terms of notes. So this is the area I want them to focus on neuro side effects. And again, this was ordered PRN for seizure activity, but I want them to be able to know what, what this means in terms of most frequent if they give this these are additional neuro effects that may occur as giving this drug, and you have to then uh, taper that information with the patient's condition of having a concussion. So knowing and discussing the neuro piece of it really ties into that neuro class. The next note here has to do with the route and dosage. Because it's being given IM, I want the students to understand is the dosage that's ordered uh, for the patient in the patient's record the dosage that is recommended for a client to receive that's an adult? And you can see here in the physician orders, what was ordered was four milligrams IV push uh, times one dose PRN. And so uh, it gives you uh, a little bit more descriptor, but that's something you can... Uh, go into the classroom discussion and talk about why that's important to always check the dosage. The other area here that I asked them to highlight because it's going to be given IV, usually your second semester students are uh, checked off in a lab of some sort to be able to give IV push medications. So this is a great time to make sure in your scenarios and your discussion in class, you integrate some of this information within your classroom discussion. This is, shouldn't only occur in clinical because the more we can provide information and bring the information in theory to clinical, the better the students are able to make those connections about IV push medication. So I want them to understand how that medication has to be diluted. Uh, and then if you have an opportunity to actually look online to see how that uh, medication may be supplied, uh, even better if you have uh, in your simulation center uh, a demi-dose related to that medication you can bring that up in class as well. So you some a little bit more um, visual, some hands-on, and you can uh, then maybe even have in the class an opportunity to go through how to prepare this medication uh, with a dilutant if you need to dilute it. Uh, the same, uh, want them to highlight the rate. And so discuss what, uh, things that can occur if it's given too fast in class. And uh, actually uh, go through the uh, steps of, and you, you sometimes you don't think that this is important, but 
students get so little opportunity to actually go through and administer an IV push medication correctly. You need to, they need to understand how to administer this correctly. So maybe bringing a um, arm and having that um, with an IV already uh, saline lock already prepared and uh, going over, get a volunteer in class and going over uh, how to actually push this medication after it's prepared and have one of the students uh, be checking the clock on uh, how to push the medication. So two to five minutes can be a long time. So students need to understand the length of time it takes to push that medication after it's prepared. So some ways to be able to tie in clinical with your theory class. <coughs> the other uh, preparation activity is really to ask them to start uh, making sure that medications that are part of the orders, that they're very familiar with those medications. So they are prepared in class to discuss that. So I've asked them to favorite, again, if they're, they don't remember how to favorite, um, uh, hyperlinks are embedded. So if I go to this hyperlink here and ask to open it, it's going to take me to acetaminophen. You can see here I favored it. That's the star. That's all they need to do. So they need to do that with the three medications. And so you may uh, this is uh, may look at what this is given for. And I want I this is important because sometimes there is a maybe a conflict in how the medication is ordered by the provider and the information in terms of route and dosage may be different than how it's ordered. So. Um, this might be a great discussion when you look at how it's ordered here. Uh, the physician ordered 650 milligrams by mouth every four hours PRN. And then when you look at, ask the students to see if there's any concern with that order. You can see here the dosage for adult is 650 milligrams max every six hours. So there's a difference of two hours on how it's ordered by the provider versus what it's recommended here. So uh, this can generate a great discussion on how you might call the provider to clarify that order or if the provider wants to order it every four hours because it is a uh, post-concussion pain management order there may be a reason why uh, that order is every four hours, but then discuss what the max amount in that uh, time period in 24 hours should be. Because if you remember from your pharmacology, and you can go over that with, this, with the students about the importance of making sure that uh, dosing is not too high with acetaminophen. And this uh, patient did also have some labs that were drawn as well. And um, uh, that's part of the other record uh, in terms of what's available. And so maybe tie in um, some information uh, outside of this case here on what labs might they draw to ensure that this patient uh, would, uh, if they're concerned with the patient's history or anything, what labs might they draw to make sure that acetaminophen is not going to uh, create any issues for this particular patient. Uh, so these can offer some great discussions uh, for your students uh, during class, very uh, short discussions as well. So um, you have a lot of information that you can uh, use within here to provide a short uh, discussion as well as a very interactive activity, but giving the students a chance to do some preparation assignment that you then can bring into your discussion for that neuro class.